white. It isn't stress that makes us fall, but it's how we respond to stressful events. And nowhere is this truer than in a position of leadership. Understanding emotional intelligence, as well as practicing the skills involved in emotional intelligence, can help you become a more successful leader. Today, we will define emotional intelligence and look at how emotional intelligence is measured. We will explore the characteristics of effective leadership and how leaders with a higher emotional intelligence are more successful. First, let's define emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence can be broken down into four branches. The perception of emotion, the use of emotion to facilitate thought, the understanding of emotion, and the management of emotion. The first branch, the perception of emotion, involves the ability to identify others' emotions. This may involve being able to recognize facial expressions and knowing what those facial expressions mean. The use of emotion to facilitate thought involves being able to use your emotions to problem solve, using your emotions to prioritize your thinking so that you're able to focus on the main points, as well as using your emotions to see different perspectives within a situation of conflict. The third branch, the understanding of emotion, involves the ability to accurately identify emotions. This includes being able to understand the different meanings of emotions, as well as the ability to recognize the blends of feelings that cause emotions. The fourth branch, the management of emotions, involves the ability to feel unpleasant feelings without allowing those feelings to influence your ability to respond within a situation it also involves your ability to monitor your own emotions as well as those of others and being able to influence those emotions. So now that we know what emotional intelligence involves, let's look at how emotional intelligence is measured. Measuring emotional intelligence has been somewhat controversial and there have been several tests developed to measure emotional intelligence. Three of the most popular tests are the Emotional Quotient Inventory, the Emotional Competency Inventory, and the Mayer Salovi Caruso Emotional Intelligence Test, or the m -Site. Both the Emotional Competency Inventory and the Emotional Quotient Inventory lack psychometric support. This is because these tests ask participants to rate or assess their own emotional sensitivity. The m -Site is the most widely used and accepted test for measuring emotional intelligence. This is a performance-based exam where participants are asked to complete tasks based on the four branches of emotional intelligence. Answers are then scored based on expert ratings of each of the response possibilities. Scores can then be used to identify areas of strength and weakness within each of the four branches. Participants are then able to seek feedback on their weaknesses in order to improve their emotional intelligence scores. So now that we know what emotional intelligence is and how it is measured, we will look at how emotional intelligence scores relate to effective leadership. Effective leadership can be defined as being able to successfully lead a group of people to attain certain goals or desired outcomes. So it seems natural that when working with people, understanding emotions is critical. Research has linked the following effective leadership skills with emotional intelligence competencies. The first skill is identifying and relating emotionally to others. Leaders who are able to connect with their employees are more successful. The second skill is being able to acknowledge and understand the feelings, desires, and needs of your employees. This helps to build trust within the group. The third skill is being able to use your emotions to engage employees which ultimately leads to successful attainment of the desired goals or outcomes. 
The final skill is being able to manage your emotions during stressful or unpleasant situations. Let's face it, who wants to follow a leader who flies off the handle or retreats into their office when things get stressful? There have, been also, there have also been several studies published that directly link effective leadership with high emotional intelligence. In 2006, J. Klein Harrison and M. William Clough published a study in the Social Science Journal that examined 15 state-of-the-art leaders. This study concluded that all of these leaders possessed a high emotional intelligence. A 2007 study by Dr. Nikki Dries and Dr. Roland Peppermans was published in the Leadership and Organizational Development Journal. This study compared high-ranking managers with average-ranking managers and found that the high-ranking managers all possessed a higher emotional intelligence than the average-ranking managers. In 2009, Lane Mills conducted a meta-analysis of the relationship between emotional intelligence and effective leadership. This study concluded that there is a moderately strong relationship between emotional intelligence and effective leadership. Therefore, we can conclude that having a high emotional intelligence plays an important part in becoming a successful leader. In summary, we have defined emotional intelligence and showed how emotional intelligence can be measured. We have discussed the qualities of an effective leader and showed the relationship between emotional intelligence and successful leadership. As you can see, emotional intelligence plays an important part in becoming a successful leader. Therefore, including emotional intelligence testing and training in our leadership development programs will increase the success of our future leaders.